good day. While they might be pedestrian today, World War II shooters took the world by storm in the early 2000s. These were some of the greatest games yet devised. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the first one I ever played, Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Medal of Honor Allied Assault was developed by 2015 Inc. and published by, ugh, EA Games, and was released on January 22nd, 2002. 22 years ago, I still remember picking up my copy from the local Best Buy in 2003 for 50 bucks, and it was a 50 bucks well spent, cause what we have here is quite possibly the most kick-ass World War II shooter ever devised. Now, there had been games before Medal of Honor Allied Assault that were set in World War II, Wolfenstein chief among them, and there had been earlier Medal of Honor games, although it wouldn't be until the early 2010s that I would even know that those existed. Those earlier games were for the PlayStation 1 and controlled and ran accordingly. They were impressive for PlayStation 1 games, and I do recommend them and have a review up of the first one. Allied Assault, though, is a whole different war beast. First off, this is a first-person shooter of the highest order. Non-regenerative health, limited health packs, quick saving and quick loading, all the good stuff. What separates Allied Assault from the older games, though, is how it structures the missions. Allied Assault gives you two different mission types regular first-person shooter missions, and war missions. And in those war missions, you fight alongside other dog faces in a big battle. Earlier games just gave you the general first-person shooter missions. Later games, including Call of Duty, would pretty much only give you the war levels. Medal of Honor Allied Assault gives you both types. This makes for a much more satisfying mission structure, even if those general first-person shooter missions are not entirely historically accurate. Another thing that separates this game from its successors is the fact that you aren't stuck with that bastard two-weapon rule. You can carry a huge number of weapons on your person at all times. A pistol, subgun, rifle, rocket launcher, shotgun. The weapons in this game are pretty good, and you get some famous American and German small arms. But sadly, the M1 carbine has been omitted due to its sheer awesomeness. The M1 Garand, despite being the standard service rifle, only appears in a small number of levels. The main American weapons that appear are the Bar, and Germans visited a lot, the Tommy Gun, the O3A3 rifle, and the 1911 Two World Wars. Lastly, you get the high standard silence pistol, and it's a cool addition, but most of the time you won't be able to sneak around much, so it's not used often. And one of the levels is bugged, and you can get it early, and it's kind of cool to get it early, but as I said, it's just not that useful compared to the other firearms. The German guns you get are the Sniper K98K, which has an offset scope for some reason. I guess they did that to differentiate it from the O3A3. An MP40, and finally, the STG-44. Oh, it is a great gun, but the enemy gets a vote too, and when you face the STG-44 boys, you will wish you had blown up that factory sooner. Lastly, you get the Panzer Shrek, and it's good for tanks, but the enemy will have them too, and overkill is not in their vocabulary. All the guns will use generic ammo types. This is very gamey, but it allows you to keep shooting your American weapons. This game's rival, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, actually differentiated the various ammo types, and thus, when you got an American Thompson, you didn't get to shoot it all that much because the Germans didn't use 45 ACP. The bastards. Medal of Honor does not have iron sight aiming, but when you use your sniper rifle, you do look through the scope. This is one of the few games that really need zoom, as the game loves to put enemies as far away from you as possible, and getting good hits is kind of hard, and you need to get good hits as the bloody Germans are goddamn aimbots. So you know how people love the AI in First Encounter Assault Recon due to its intelligence? Well here, we are fighting the Germans, and in a manner broadly similar to their real life counterparts, they are a wily and tough foe, and they also must be hopped up on Pervitin or something, cause they can tank multiple hits to the face! This game's AI is extraordinarily good and completely unforgiving, and they love poking holes in your supple flesh. Especially when compared to later war shooters. They will seek cover, and they will move around to avoid your shots. They will also spawn in hard to see areas, and as you move around the levels, you will have to be very 
very careful, because like with blood, you can turn a corner and just get evaporated by the Teutonic Terrors. This game gets really horrible on levels where you have to face snipers. There is zero scope glint and no muzzle flash, so you gotta keep them eyes peeled Otherwise, you are gonna die really fast. I just about never finished that goddamn Sniper's Alley mission. <sighs> Better just to take off and send a fat man or a little boy. The game can sometimes be merciful and will give you a bunch of health kits and will spawn them in places where you will really need them. But despite that, the game can still get keyboard smashingly frustrating at times. And there will be a few places where the game just stops and you are going to be smashing your head against a concrete bunker for 20 minutes just trying to get past. So, when you make it to the now famous D-Day mission, that's where we get a major difficulty spike. Getting off that beach takes an act of congress, and every mission afterwards will be a tough slog. But, it's not so much of a slog that you will say screw the game and move on. It's a game that breaks your balls and leaves you wanting more punishment till the game is over. And while the game is hard, it's seldom cheap, and that's why it kept me coming back again and again. Now this can potentially be due to the widescreen mod I'm using, but this game has a glitch where in addition to them being able to tank half a mag from the Tommy Gun, the game will sometimes not register your hits. Annoying, but the game is still playable. In Medal of Honor Allied Assault, you have generic objectives in each level. You know, you blow this up, capture that, all standard and all fun. In the early 2000s, it was said that COD brought in squad-based combat, but Medal of Honor Allied Assault had it beat because some of the levels do give you a squad, but they are all pretty much scripted to die so that you, the player, can up play the game? Cause like the COD bots, the MOHAA bots are bloody aim bots, and if they were there all the time, they would make the player feel a little useless. Unlike in later games, there is one, count them, one turret section, and this turret section is great, and you can get hurt, and it's just as hard as the rest of the game. If you were bloody born in 2002 and never heard of the greatness of Medal of Honor Allied Assault, Pick up a copy for 10 bucks from GOG, install the community launcher, and get ready to hammer that quick save key. Graphically, this game looks bloody sick. That community launcher ensures that the game renders in the highest quality possible, and it shows that 2015 was doing something right, because this is some major photo realism, man. I miss the days when the PC was king. Even the M1 Garand has markings on the receiver! This was a well-optimized game as it was perfectly playable on my non-super expensive Dell desktop, and even the super complex levels did not give me too many frame drops. The texture work has aged gracefully as have the guns. Hell, even the 3D models look amazing. Sound for the game has to be heard to be believed. It truly is a feast for the ears, and sounds as good today on my kick-ass modern sound system as it did on my rather more basic one from 2002. VA work is minimal, but passable. Music is done by industry legend Michael Gacchino, and his Medal of Honor theme is one of the greatest gaming themes of all time, and is the standout track. However, you won't hear it much outside of the main menus, as it will be covered up by the fightin', but what's there is high quality, as we would come to expect from Mr. Gacchino. Medal of Honor shipped with a pretty robust multiplayer that sadly I have never played, but it must have been popular enough as the community launcher allows you to play it on fan servers. Medal of Honor Allied Assault does not have that large of a modding community, but one does exist and some high res texture packs have been created and there is even an iron sight aiming mod as well. When the game shipped, it did not have a co-op mode, but fans over the years have created a co-op mod, but I have not played it so I do not know how well it it works. This game does not have a story so much as it has a plot, meaning that there's no character development, there's no villains, it's just you. One dog face fighting against the fell forces of the Germans. Now, each mission is introduced by a Colonel Leslie Hargrove. He'll tell you what you gotta do, and he'll have a little bit of flavoring here and there, but it's pretty dry compared to a more narrative-based game. You play as Butterbar Mike Powell and start the game as a U.S. Army Ranger, and you lead the way to try and rescue a captured SAS man. Your squad gets wiped out. You can possibly save one guy, but he won't accompany 
accompany you. You meet up with SAS man Jack Grillo and pave the way for the Allied invasion of North Africa. Best part of this level is where you have to fight off Germans from atop a lighthouse. After North Africa, Powell is inducted into the OSS and goes on secret behind the lines missions. Next mission has you blowing up a sub and destroying the Naxos device. This is my favorite mission of the game. You start by infiltrating a German base and in the first five seconds, Grillo bites it. As a kid, I was shocked as I had never seen a character die that way and it really showed that this game was going to be different. Sadly, you won't connect with any other characters throughout the game. Later, you break the Geneva Convention, don a German uniform, and hunt down the Naxos device. Now you might think you just smash it with your pistol butt, but no, when you go to smash it, the German scientists actually whip out P-38s and try and shoot you. They and the mechanics in this game are bad ass. They fight as hard as the bloody German soldiers. You sneak onto the sub, set the charges, and be sure to grab the manifest so you can get a medal. Yeah, the better you play, the more medals you can unlock, cause this game has class. After blowing up the sub, it's time to make your death-defying escape. You have to run through hordes of Germans and reach a train. This is an awesome mission, and this is the last of what I like to call the easy fights. Because next, it's D-Day, the 6th of June. Now back in 2002, this game was like none other. This was extraordinarily impressive. And I gotta say, even though this game is extraordinarily old by video game standards, this still looks pretty bloody good even now. It's really hard to express just how cool this was to young General Lotz. Really, I grew up with Wolfenstein 3D, and in less than 10 years, we went from bleeps and bloops and pixels to this. This level is hard in the extreme, and even if you know what you're doing, it's still going to be a tough fight. It took me ages to get off this goddamn beach, and even once you get off that goddamn beach, fighting through the inner bunker complex is just as hard. The rest of the game will be partially based upon scenes from Saving Private Ryan, and they're all pretty good. You gotta attack a radar station, you've got that goddamn sniper's alley, and the sniper's alley level is similar to the scene where Vin Diesel's character gets blasted. Finally, you end up stealing a Royal Tiger tank. And yes, you steal and control a Koenigstiger. This level controls really well and keeps the game from getting tedious. Now, you fight through a lot of different battles and you finally end up at the final mission. And this final mission is pretty awesome. It has you and a bunch of rangers taking down a poison gas plant. I've got a real love-hate relationship with this level. On the one hand, it's pretty bloody impressive. On the other hand, it's so hard, it's uh, bordering upon cheap. As you fight through it, you eventually get to the gas containers, and yeah, you can blow them open. Hope you got a gas mask. After this, you gotta run a gauntlet as the base blows up around you. When you get to the end of the base, this is where the game stops. See, all you gotta do is walk about 15 feet to a train and the game is over. This segment here took me 15 minutes to beat. You will be beat to crap, low on ammo, and the devs put Germans in all the right places. You will have to plan every move if you hope to escape. When you do, you watch the gas plant blow and then smash cut to credits. Medal of Honor Allied Assault would usher in the age of the World War II shooter. Medal of Honor Allied Assault never had a direct sequel, but it did get two expansions, Medal of Honor Spearhead and Medal of Honor Breakthrough. In the early 2000s, I played Spearhead and was annoyed by the bad frame rate, but loved the new weapons. In Spearhead, you play as a new character named Sergeant Barnes, and you fight with non-American troops from time to time. And that game started my love affair with the number four Mark I, Lee, infield. A rifle that I finally picked up in 2017 and still love shooting to this very day. Somewhat ahistorically, Barnes fights alongside the Soviet Union and he gets a Mosin Nagant and a PPSH-41 and that gun has 71 rounds of awesome. Sadly, I will likely never own one due to it costing as much as a new bloody car and ain't no gun worth that. 
I, as of 2024, have never played Breakthrough, but one day I will give it a shot. There would be other Medal of Honor games developed, but not by 2015 Inc. You'd have games such as Medal of Honor Frontline, Rising Sun, Airborne, and Pacific Assault, and these were all great games, and I have reviewed Frontline with fellow content creator Ekbar fan, and Airborne, which I reviewed solo, and you better believe we're going to be taking a look at more Medal of Honor games in the future. As of the space future 2024, there is yet to be a remastering of this game, and it really needs it. Getting it to run requires some modding, and for console players, they've been left out since its release. If this thing got a port for modern consoles, new players, and and old alike could enjoy the excellence of Medal of Honor Allied Assault. If it's been 20 years since you played the game, download that community launcher and boot that bastard back up and step back into the days when the PC was king. And so I am General Lots wishing you good Call of Duty 1, good Call of Duty World War, whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and please consider leaving a like or a comment as the algorithm desires your soul. And I want to thank all those fans who have supported this channel, both past and present.